This is our neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So we're from here, brought up around here. We're Flyer fans, Sixer fans, Philly fans. So we are Philly fans, you just want to come to football, it's a little bit different, that's all. Tell them, 65 toss power yeah. trap. Get in there for 65 toss power trap. Come on, let's go! How'd you become a Chiefs fan? Back in the day, my father put a big bet in. It was a Super Bowl, 1970. He won. I got a bike out of the deal, and that was it. That's how things started with Paul. Then again, he started, this whole tradition really started in his house with watching the Chiefs game. Game time. He had a satellite at his house at the time. And then four or five years later, he had a satellite put on at the bar. And ever since then, we've been watching him here. Big Charlie is Paul's dad. Paul's dad owned the bar up until he passed away in 83. This bar started out with two, three, four, five of us. And we recruited a lot of people in the years going by. I was a Dallas Cowboy fan. Paul, he switched me over to Chief fan. Was a Phillies hat. <laughs> and then we turned it into the Kansas City hat. That's my boy, Billy. Yeah, I'm beef. I've been following the Chiefs with Paulie and Annie for like 25, 30 years. Best team in the world. I wouldn't have them on my arm if I didn't love them. It started with a couple of guys. It just grew over the years. And now I'm the owner of the bar. Um, what this means to us, what it means to me is everything. NFL Films began capturing the Big Charlie story in 2003. Now, keep in mind, this saloon, known as Arrowhead East, is located about 12 blocks north of Philadelphia's Lincoln Financial Field. In a city known for sports passion, no place tops this place, even if it's a tiny red oasis in the bleed green heart of Eagles country. What's your favorite thing about this place? Get off! Get off! I feel like home. I feel like everybody's in here. Like, I won't walk into a corner bar, but this place is like family. There's a very strong uh, crowd who believes in togetherness. Two hands, I like that. Well, they always kept the tradition going. And he built the empire. Oh, he built it, yeah, he built it. <laughs> built a small little nation going around here. You won't know until you just come around here and hang around here and you experience it. Paul built it, and they've come for four plus decades from all corners of Chief's Kingdom. I live in St. Louis. It's at Arrowhead last week and Arrowhead East this week. I'm from uh, Leavenworth, Kansas, actually. Came here on vacation down to Philly and uh, heard about the place, decided to come down and check it out. Great place, fun people. Yeah, I'm from Kansas City. Kevin Ross brought me here, number 31. He was telling me there was a bar he wanted me to see that I wouldn't believe. And uh, I'll tell you what, there ain't no bar in Kansas City like this one. Over the years, Chiefs players have flocked to Big Charlie's. So have their moms. Hold it! Everybody told somebody, including NFL Films president Steve Sable. You thought it might be fun if his old friend Dick Vermeil dropped by. Vermeil was already a hero in South Philly for leading the Eagles to their first NFC championship. He's going to the Super Bowl. You know, he's going to the Super Bowl is where he's going. When he later became the Chiefs head coach, NFL Films set up a surprise visit to the old neighborhood. So you guys have any idea what you're in for tonight? No. What are you expecting? I'm just hoping that you have a security patrol for Coach when he walks in there, because it'll be like the Pope going in the Vatican. Coach, is this strange for you, being in South Philadelphia, going to see Chiefs fans? Well, I don't know how many things there's, it could be four or five guys, for all I know. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, you know. You're in for a surprise. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Plus, I love South Philly. I spent a lot of time down there going into the little restaurants, and so I know the atmosphere. One time, I accepted an invitation in South Philly to this lady's house. She invited Caroline to dinner. She was blind. Unbelievable meal, 
flames all up around the pots and everything. But she knew what she was doing. It's great food. It was great. Had a wonderful evening. And Monday, I get to work and I get a call from the NFL office. Did you know that you have been affiliating with known gamblers, organized gambling in <laughs> NFL games? I said, you kidding me? No, what? So I said, well, it turns out that this, this lady's brother was deeply involved in, in gambling on NFL games. <laughs> and he went to work and bragged about me having dinner with him on Friday night. And it got in two minutes to the NFL office and three minutes back to me. Nice lady. We're back here watching a video of the Chiefs yearbook. Coach Vermeil, who was coaching the Chiefs at the time, called us up. Hello. This is Dick Vermeil. Hey, Coach Vermeil, how you doing? <laughs> I'm just calling you from my office. So I don't have Spoke to Coach Vermeil for a while. I see people backing in through the doorway. And uh, lo and behold, they come walking in. Coach Vermeil and the rest of the coaching staff come walking into the back bar, and it was mayhem from there. Hey! Hi, Zan. Wow, Dick How are you? How you doing? Yeah, maybe. How are you? Maybe it's... All of a sudden, Dick Vermeil was right behind me. He went from me on the phone to being right behind me. It was unbelievable. And everybody was in here that day, got fell in love with him. Paulie or Paul? Yeah, Paul. Paul. Paulie, that's some of the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've heard a lot about this place. And we recruited more people after that. <laughs> we appreciate your loyal support, and we're going to give you a lot to, to yell about this year. <laughs> you guys got to get Andy Reid down here and show him this place. <laughs> He's a great guy. And Andy's a great guy. We don't play the Eagles. This is about Dolores, cousin Dolores. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. okay. You actually know his cousin Dolores. She's blind. Oh, yeah. I just told the story. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, I just told the story. That's cousin. I just told the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's lovely lady. Yeah. I told him about cooking the meal for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flames shooting out all over. But her brother was a gambler on days. <laughs> Right? How's she doing? Hey, give her my love. She's a sweet lady. I, she used to call, this is a true story now. When the coaches came in, uh, I enjoyed it because it, it surprised this guy here more than anyone. And uh, that's the number one fan. Lamar Hunt should know this guy. Chiefs founder Lamar Hunt did get to meet Anthony and Paul, whose family bond with their team only grew. I always knew, you know, the pictures with Joe Montana and, uh, and Derek Thomas. I heard stories growing up that they would go to Kansas City and they'd be on the field during the game and then they went out to dinner and the nightclubs with the players. And I was like, that's pretty different. Like, I don't hear, like, my friends talk about their dads do that, right? The day I was born, the Chiefs played the Broncos. And <laughs> my dad actually left the hospital to go to the bar and watch the game. November 6, 1988. Tackle in the end zone by Dino Hackett. It's a safety. That's my son, Anthony Jr. Anthony Jr., how long have you been coming to the bar? Since, I'd say the day I was born. <laughs> I, I might have been here after the hospital. I'm not too sure. <laughs> my son was born in 88. My first experience in Kansas City was in 91. I came home with about $1,500 worth of Chiefs paraphernalia, of which 800 of it was for him. It's a Chiefs helmet my dad gave to me. September 1990, this was made. Ooh, 23 years later, still wearing it? Is that 24 years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I was bad, like, as a little kid, like, and, like, I was getting, like, punished or grounded, like, my father would threaten me by telling me I can't come to the bar to watch the Chiefs. <laughs> and that was, like, devastating. That was me. And my little sister. She was an infant, she wasn't and I was She wasn't free. even walking yet. Yep. So you were born to be a Chiefs fan. <laughs> we had a cat, KC. <laughs> my dad named him. Yeah, my dad named him. <laughs> so growing up, I had to explain what it was, you know, my friends were like, what is KC? And I was like, well, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, yeah. that. And they're like, what's, who's that? I'm like, oh. So I wasn't always a football fan. 
they could put me in the outfits all day, but I really didn't <laughs> understand it, what it was. But I always had the story to tell about my dad and my brother being Chiefs fans. They loved them so much, and then I became a Chiefs fan and football fan through that. Well, tell them your nickname. <laughs> her fiance gave her the nickname. She's the number one lady chief. What's your fiance a fan of? He's an Eagles fan, um, but for now, for now. For, for now. But I always say, like, our uh, baby eventually will come out of the womb and wear a Chiefs onesie. That's nice. Gonna be, All right, that's going to be a good compromise. That's what I was wearing. That's what Anthony right. was wearing. So that's not up yeah, for debate. That's not up for debate. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. The game is over, and the Arizona Cardinals are heading for Super Bowl 43. Heartbreak for the Eagles who went this far. For years, living in Philadelphia and seeing friends and family of, of ours that are Eagles fans being so disappointed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm super envious because I'm like, dude, we were just 2-14. and 14. Like, mm -hmm. I would do anything to be rooting in December and January for my team. The Big Charlie's gang got their wish when Andy Reid the head coach who had given Philly so much to cheer about was hired by Kansas City in 2013. Here at NFL Films, it felt like a good time to check in at Arrowhead East. We wrote him a letter, happy to have him on board to our family. Maybe thought we were nuts saying it was our family, but around here it's our family. A week later, we got a box, it was a helmet, a letter, and a picture, the picture's behind the bar. How about those Chiefs, baby? The coach, known as Big Red, rebuilt the Chiefs. How about those Chiefs? With help from a once-in-a-lifetime quarterback. People just elevating their game to the game Patrick Mahomes is dictating. After Kansas City's first Super Bowl win, Paul got a new bite. Now, 50 years later, Come on, kid. the Chiefs were riding high in the AFC Championship. So I was in Miami the week of leading up to the Super Bowl just to see for the festivities, week. right? For yeah. press week and everything. And my buddy was like, hey, dude, I got us tickets to the game, 40 yard line. Let's let's go. And I was like, in a billion years, I would never not be with my family and friends at the bar. It's not even a question for me. You can let me be on the field. It doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that important to me to be there. And, you know, it was it was definitely the right choice. All right, let's talk a little about the game. What game is that? No, I'm it's just kidding. A, well, it's a <laughs> <laughs> we were down 10 nothing, and Sam Fran was really tough. They may have been even a more complete team. That ball gets knocked out. But, I mean, they didn't have Pat. And here is Patrick Mahomes. You know, it has not been a pretty night for him. Third and 15. Chiefs need some Mahomes magic. Oh, that was her first experience oh, yeah. of, of potential heartbreak over the Chiefs, like real heartbreak. Real bad heartbreak. Where we've been through it because we're just a little bit older and stuff, right? Like, so we were, well, it'll be fine because we know we have each other. Launches down the middle, Hill, open, caught. Kansas City, the big play. Yeah! Come on, cousin Pat! Cousin Pat! Cousin Pat! First and goal, pass, open, yeah! touchdown. Kelsey, Chiefs are back in. And we were like, Marina, calm down. Like, it, it actually Paul was the calmest I've he ever was. seen him, and yeah. I was hysterical crying. I said, how are you? And Paulie kept saying, it's just a game, remember? Mm -hmm. It's just a game. It's just a game. It's only a game, It's only a game. it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. She did say that. It's not just a game. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her crying. <laughs> she did say that. <laughs> it's crazy because you want it so much for everyone else. Like, I wanted it more for my dad and Paulie mm -hmm. than I did myself. Mm -hmm. Family! This is what it is, family! I'm going to throw the 
third down and goal. Who's goal? Who's goal? Mahomes throws, pass, Warriors, touchdown! Kansas City jumps on top. This is a four-point game with 2.44 left. The last minute, we were on the bar chanting defense. Defense. Now third down and ten. Garoppolo airs it out. Sanders downfield is overthrown. And now with a minute 33 left, it's fourth and ten. to school as a little kid. They've just been lifelong older brother, little brother, best friends, and as much as they're invested in the Chiefs, they're invested in each other and seeing each other go through heartbreak and want each other to see that happiness we were able to feel Super Bowl Sunday. I love you, Todd. I love you. After the game, walking outside the bar, Paul said it was like when the Wizard of Oz turns from black and white to color. Literally a whole nother world. The music, the neighbors had fireworks for us. It was so beautiful. They won though. <laughs> Don't cry. Happy tears. I know that, I know that doll. Look at this, this is sick. This is sick. Oh my God. You built this. Yeah, you built this. Guys you like you. This. Guys like you. you built this. He's so welcoming. You feel the need to thank him because sometimes when you love something so much, you don't want to give it away to other people. You don't want them to feel that love too. But he doesn't care. He wants everybody to feel the love. Congratulations. How about that bicycle? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Any kind of last thoughts? No. No, that's, I can't think of anything else. This is like your life's work, almost. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't supposed to be like that, neither. It's supposed to be a little thing, and it just grew. Just grew. Andy Reid! Congratulations. Man alive, how great is that? Huh? Hey! How about those trees? Yeah! Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 